Hello, hello, Sarah of SEK Handmade here, and I am so excited to be here with you this evening. It has been oh, a long time since I have gone live after the kids are in bed. It feels extra special, and I am so excited for our Meet the Maker guest tonight. You know I love to talk, and I love to talk with fun people, and Britt is just so much fun. So I can't wait to get to know her better and have you get to know her better. She is a lovely, talented, and generous maker. And um, I'm going to say it right now. Check out the links below. We've got links to all of her stuff and you definitely need to check her out. But hold on. Get to know Britt first and then check those out at the end. Hello. Hi. Hello, everybody. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing good. The sun is shining in Seattle after a whole day of gray. So it is refreshing. It's very good. <laughs> That's so lovely. Are you at like nice temperatures? Because we jumped up to 88 today and I'm like, huh, -uh, I do not no. want any of that. Um, I would love it if it were 88. That's my dream. Instead, I think it is a cool 59. Mm. We should play swap because I love the 50s and 60s. I can't stand them. <laughs> you look so cozy in your sweater, though. Yeah, yeah. This is my very first fully knit garment that I made. It's um, uh, the year-round popover by Homebody Fibers. And she put out a test call and I was like, so I can knit sort of in pearl, kind of. Can I test it? And she's like, absolutely. It's like, okay, great. <laughs> So it's truly beginner friendly because I finished it. <laughs> uh, that's amazing because I, ne I mm -mm, nope, I could not have managed that. It is gorgeous. I love that yarn you used. Yeah, Montana crochet never misses. Um, <laughs> it's just, and I've had this mm -hmm. yarn forever. It's Aaron weight, which I never use. And I actually bought it for a kit for uh, a TL Yarn Crafts collab that she was doing way back in the day with uh, Montana Crochet, which might be actually how I found out about her. So worked out. I love it. I love it. I do that too, where I buy things for specific things and then end up, end up using them for something totally different. Mm -hmm. It's my MO. <laughs> I love it. It's wonderful. I mean, it's really like just curate curating a collection of yarn are you are you the type of person who has a lot of yarn i feel like i remember you saying like you you I have are too, really careful about your yarn purchases I have, I have too much yarn i it's it's a problem <laughs> like mm -hmm. i have to de-stash all the time and i should do it more except then my friends and i talk about de-stashing and then i shop their de-stash so i've got like stuff coming from friends um because i'm trying to help them de-stash without yeah it's it's bad it's generous of you that's what yeah. it is you're just being very generous with your yeah. friends yeah but you know at the end of the day i'm like okay well i will i'll design with that or i'll make something special with that or one day i'll make a scrappy blanket which doesn't make sense because i've never done that before but i'm um i'm optimistic you had never knit a sweater before though either and here we are and when you it could happen the arm goes further <laughs> exactly exactly see it's fun I'll get there eventually. I I am in full support of, of buy the yarn that makes you happy. Mm -hmm. And uh, because there's nothing worse than like seeing that yarn and being like, oh, it's amazing. And then it's gone and you like long for that yarn you it's, can't purchase anymore. I have been burned a few times. So, and by burned, I mean just FOMO. So <laughs> it's like, well, I really wanted that. And I waited to the last minute and now I can't have it, but I really want it. So I, I'm like, I'm first to shop. Like if I want it, I'm in there like swimwear. So yeah. I love it. I am a, a very untrusting person of the um, like club colorways where they like show uh, you the inspiration. Mm -hmm. I'm always like, well, they could go really like teal which would be so up my alley or but there's a like a little bit of baby pink in there and if they go all baby pink like that's definitely not me and then they always show it like after you can't order it anymore and i'm like yeah dang <laughs> it's, it's the worst every single time 
I can only do a club from a trusted source. So I've done the Montana crochet clubs <laughs> because her eye is perfect. Um, and I don't think that I've ever gotten anything from a surprise from her that I didn't enjoy. So it was a great thing for me. Um, but I've also been like a knit crate person for four, five years now, still getting it, still being surprised. Sometimes I'm happy, sometimes I'm not, <laughs> and I just keep going. But I think it was, I think it was really good for me to do knit crate though, because I learned so much about finer yarn when I was first starting out. Um, and that helped me just create a collection. I have too much and that they are part of the problem. And, and it, it made me more appreciative for what I could get and I could make more sense out of, you know, hand dyer stuff. So, yes, the, there's nothing more valuable than having the yarn and feeling the yarn and working with the yarn and just seeing what it does. Yes. I did not, when I first started out, did not have an appreciation for, um, the variance in weight and the difference in, um, fiber content and what that did as far as working with the yarn. So yeah, having different things come to you, mm -hmm. that'd be a great way to learn about that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. I really like it. And you just designed your knit crate, right? I did. Yes. And I just got, so I design and they send me the color that they want me to design in. Um, which was this really pretty coral. But if you know my color palette, my color palette is not does not include coral. It does but it not. It was gorgeous. But then they sent me my yarn and it's this gorgeous green. And oh, I'm like, that green. that is right up my alley. And I get to keep that. So that's gorgeous. When I did it for them, I did the Malabrigo one and it was this like, it was basically camo. It was so good. I was like, thank you for giving me bulky weight and camo colors. <laughs> that's, that's that's another dyer that I feel like I can't go wrong with. Malabrigo, yeah. every every skein I see of theirs, I'm like, yes, yep, you could come home with me. I could have a whole like yarn store of just Malabrigo yarn. Yeah, it's they're they're so real nice. I really like their stuff. A little probably a little too much, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Neither here nor there. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Oh my goodness. I love it. All right. Let's, let's get down to business here. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself, your, your family, where you grew up, uh, any hobbies you have, anything you want to sure. tell us about yourself? Yeah. So, um, my name's Brittany. Uh, my mother will tell you that it is every single syllable. Um, so I, um, I currently live in Seattle. I am a native of California. So I miss the sun daily. And <laughs> this is me very pale. <laughs> so um, we moved up here a couple of years ago. Um, my now husband and I just like on a whim because we both are native Californians. And we never have lived anywhere else. Like I have family in Florida. So I grew up going to Florida all of the time. Um, so I had that, but I never really lived outside of California and I need two things in life. I need to be within a hundred miles of an airport and um, close to the water. So where I live is both of those, which is fantastic. I think I'm maybe two miles from like the estuary of a body of water, which is really nice because I need that. Um, let's see, I've got three children. I did not have a pandemic baby. I had a pre-pandemic, we didn't know COVID existed baby, but it, but you know, it was like the first one that wasn't counted. It's a pandemic baby. Um, and he's great. And I have, and he has two older sisters and they take up all of my time, um, <laughs> which is why nighttime crafting is essential. Um, and they're great. They're seven, almost five and one and a half. And boy, oh boy, they're all very different and all different versions of myself. And that mirror it's hard. <laughs> it's tough sometimes. Yep. Yep. They say things and you're like, dang it. <laughs> you're, you're not wrong and you're so right. And that was really funny, but yeah. 
so yeah, and I'm a, I'm a stay at home parent. I'm the main caregiver, um, which is very different from what I used to do. I used to um, build customer support teams for tech startups. So um, I've uh, I used to work at Eventbrite. I used to work at Rover when Rover was like really teeny tiny. Um, and I, I loved it. And now I manage three versions of myself and I don't, I don't do that great. Um, <laughs> they, they really know how to work the boss. <laughs> right. But I, <laughs> I used to be a teacher and I, I do not. Oh my God. Looking back, I'm like, this is the, the dumbest thing I ever thought potentially. I don't know why I thought that teaching five to 12 year olds would prepare me for toddlers. Mm -mm. But I thought like, I know kids, it's fine. No, it is not the same. Great. Yeah, 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 no, can't do that. <laughs> mm -mm. No, no. So you said you have to live by an airport. Do you like to travel? I do. Um, I typically, I have this, I have this thing where we've had, you know, a bit of tra like a few too many tragedies in life to where I needed to drop what I'm doing, hop on a plane, fly to Miami. And uh -huh. so for me, it's even when I was the brokest of broke, it was like you need a thousand dollars in your savings account and the right. ability to leave. Um, so uh -huh. I've always just been near an airport and I've been flying since I've been flying alone since I was probably seven. Um, and my first flight, I think I was three months old. So <laughs> I've been flying a lot. Like I have, a, there's a passport picture of me where someone's clearly just holding me up and I'm just jello. <laughs> I'm just, mouth just open, eyes big. <laughs> That's hilarious. But my parents had to get back to London. So here we are. <laughs> oh my God. I, I love to travel. We just came back from um, a trip to New York um which was a really big deal because we haven't been in probably five or six years and we really haven't been traveling since the pandemic hit and my mom is a saint and was like please leave i was like great will you fly in and watch my children so i can leave you with the screaming ones thank you goodbye so yeah i can't wait to get back to traveling because i need to take my husband to italy um post haste yeah not, yeah Mm -hmm. That's cool. So have you done a lot of international travel then? I did some, I did do a study abroad program in college in Florence for a while. And from that went all through Italy and a bit um, into Germany. Right. That seems right. Yeah. But when I was very young, um, probably a baby, I was, I, I think we lived in London for like two years or something like that before moving to California. So I know my parents were trying to be all internationally. So, <laughs> so I always have this bug to go places and, and visit other things and um, even planned our honeymoon was just in Europe and it was very driven by beer and it was all planned by me. <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> I love it. I was going to ask, where are your parents from London? But no. no How did you end Miami. up over there? They're just, what? They're from Miami. <laughs> they just thought that, you know, my parents grew up in the time where like the human missile crisis was happening and there's like a lot of strife and there's, you know, Miami is Miami and they wanted to get out. And so their way that they could see getting out was um, going to England for a while and living very differently. Um, and then my dad was working for a company at the time that like was training him there. And then they were like, guess what? You get to live in the Bay area. And he was like, what is that? And, <laughs> and I was there ever since <laughs> till recently. So it turned out pretty well. My, my parents like learned to really appreciate wine. So at the end of the day, you know, that's where we lived. We lived close enough to be, you know, to go to nap all the time and they, they loved it. And now everyone is in Miami, but me. <laughs> oh, did your parents move out of California then too? Yep. Yep. They moved. Okay. They both live in Florida now. And are, is your like extended family all in Florida then? Everybody's there. Yeah. Everybody but me, which makes, you know, 
planning holidays a little bit difficult <laughs> or, you know, especially in the, in, in the pandemic and, you know, we've had some other tragedies in the family and I'm just like, I'll just be here. <laughs> Let me know how it goes. But I have a humongous family. So there's a lot of support there and um, we're all very close, which is really wonderful. That's great. Mm -hmm. Have you thought like that you'd like to get back to Miami at some point? Or? God, you know, Miami's in Florida, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do. I don't, I don't know much about geography. So that is a fair question. Yeah. But <laughs> no. So you have no desire. I, um, I, when I was younger, I wanted to go to high school there. I wanted to go to um, college there. Um, I'm glad that didn't happen. Uh, I, I, I can't, I can't live there. I just, I just can't unless it annexes to I don't know, New York. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it. Um, and it's just, it's just a different, it's a different way of living. Um, yeah. It's not my jam. Happy to visit, happy to eat my grandmother's food. Um, you know, happy to eat all the food and, mm -hmm. Maybe I'll see a beach. It's not really that important when I'm there and everybody's cooking. So, but yeah, not, not for me anymore. That's okay. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't, I have visited Florida and I love to go down and play in the ocean and collect the seashells and then leave. <laughs> yeah. Disney World is great. Um, there are gators and that's great. Mm -hmm. Um, food is really good <laughs> the food's great and that i mean it's a very pretty place and it's just mm -hmm. it's just very different and i will say that miami is very different from the majority of florida so it's kind of hard and my part of miami is not the beach <laughs> it's uh it's real real miami um so that's just a whole different different thing i don't really it doesn't mesh well with me that's fine Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's good to know that right yeah yeah like i feel like sometimes um the wisdom of uh just knowing being able to say like i can appreciate that but it's not for me mm -hmm. is is something i appreciate about being older than a teenager because when <laughs> i was a teenager you know it was just like what does everybody like yeah sure me too <laughs> Now as an adult, I'm like, you know, not good for not you. Not for me today. Is how we exactly. Today. Exactly. Today. I love that you love that. <laughs> Great to visit. Won't be staying very long. Gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So why don't you tell us about how you learned to, well, I, I assume you learned to crochet first because I know you've been doing that for a while and yes. knitting seems more recent. But let's, yes. so let's start with crochet. Where, where did you learn? How did you learn? When did you pick it up? So at some point I decided, I discovered that I was pregnant and I, you know, probably ignored it for a long time. And then was like, Oh, let me be crafty. Let me do something. Like, let me make a blanket for my unborn child. It'll be great. And I'll get a book from the library and I'll learn. And well, I didn't do that very well. I probably, I, I, mm, yeah, I, 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 I hated it. Like I, couldn't, I couldn't work it. I couldn't get the stick to do what the string said and the book and the thing and whatever. So I just, I just rage quit. And I was like, I'm done here. And I went on about my life. And then I, and I realized I was like, well, I bought this stuff. I should at least try it again. Um, Cause I was free and had too much free time. Um, so I decided I try it again and so it clicked for whatever reason it made sense so i'm working along and i'm looking up things on the internet and like okay i can double crochet i know what that means i'll do that let me find a pattern or whatever and i came across the v stitch and i was like that looks cool and so i made my child a blanket in the v stitch in burnett baby blanket yarn it was variegated because I was against gender colors at the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, to be a new parent. Um, <laughs> and I was like, she's gonna get whatever she wants. It'll be great. 
And when I tell you that, let me see if I can figure out what the shape was. The shape when I was finished was like this. And then I think it bent here and then it came down. I think it had 17 sides. Like, I, I don't know. Like it, it has so many sides to it. It made no sense. I was, pr I was the proudest. I was so proud. I was so proud. And I was like, fine, it'll be great. Whatever. My daughter is seven. She sleeps with that blanket every single night. It's no longer whitish. It's a different color. And we were definitely in Michael's and she was like, mom, is that the yarn that you use for my blanket? And I was like, yes, baby, it is. She's like, it's so white. I was like, isn't it? Like, <laughs> it was, I was like, yours is kind of old. Uh, but she sleeps with it every night. So that's all that matters, right? <laughs> so after that, I never stopped crocheting. I discovered Tony of TL Yarn Crafts because I really didn't see anybody that looked like me in the industry because all I had was Instagram because I didn't know any better. So I just, uh, I just jumped right in and I loved it. Um, I started testing for everybody under the sun. I started doing samples. I started making garments that I totally don't wear. Um, but it was like the thrill of making it on a deadline. Like that's going to be fantastic. Um, it took up all of my free time and, um, I regret nothing. <laughs> I regret absolutely nothing. After a while, I was like, I was testing people's patterns and thinking, oh, I, you know, I think if I did this, 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 and this, I would really like that. I like that a little bit more. And I, then I realized, oh, I'm like doing that design thing that I told my husband I would never be able to do um, because I have touted that I'm not creative or an artist my entire life. That's like always a thing that I have said. Because I have this logical brain that isn't typically inspired by like colors or images. It's more of if you do A, B, C, and D, you'll get E, and E is really cool. So it just it just kind of happened, and then um, and then what happened? Oh, I think then some weird stuff happened in the community, and then I started getting really really vocal. <laughs> really really loud and then um you know I've always felt like it was really difficult to find people that looked like me because the of doing the crafts especially on Instagram which is where I mostly found other crafters um so I decided to do something about it and at first I started a you know an Instagram account the makers of color collective to try to highlight other makers of color um but that's like really hard like it is it's difficult a to find people and to keep up with it um so i kind of pivoted that a little bit and then created a directory of makers on my own website after i launched my website because clearly i don't have enough things to do so i thought that was a good idea and it still is a great idea and it's fantastic and then i did a pattern directory so people could put their patterns up which is great and now i'm making a calendar of people <laughs> With all unique designs. <laughs> so, you sound so uncreative to oh me. <laughs> my, you know what? I might not be like rainbow creative, like color wise, but give me a task or it's let me solve a problem. And that's always been my thing, which is why I loved customer service because I dealt with the most time sensitive, terrible, joyous, difficult things that can ever happen to an animal as like a third party. And I was like, oh, give me that problem. I will eat that up. Like, <laughs> I will solve your problem for you so quick. You need this, I got you. And I'm still like that. And so I, I like the, I like fulfilling a need. Um, and that's, that's what I feel like I'm doing now and designing at every single second, which is both stressful and fulfilling, <laughs> as you know. <laughs> sure do. <laughs> Especially with little tiny people. My my youngest is in first grade. I homeschooled them last year. Um, but they are both in school full time. And, but when when there are little people and like the intense schedule of like they they need the feedings, 
at specific times throughout the day mm -hmm. and know they cannot wait for that snack. I mean, mine don't think they can wait for that snack, but also mine are old enough to go to the cheese drawer themselves and get the cheese stick. Um, <laughs> and, and nap time and all of that. And it's, it's intense. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's a lot. And this is the first time that my, my kids are going to school um, you know, we did co-op for a long time for preschool, which was fantastic, but now I've got one that goes to a full-time preschool that's only a half day, and then the other one's going to public school, which is great, but I, during the day, have about, <laughs> my husband is being weird, <laughs> during the day, I have like nine, from nine to 10.30 to do anything. And my youngest has a lot of health issues. So I'm constantly going, I was at Children's Hospital Day at an appointment, like moving and shaking, got to pick up kids, got to lay them down, got to do what I got to do. I'm very lucky that my husband has worked from home ever since we moved to Seattle. So I'll just go, hey, um, if I get you a euro, will you just sit in the house and make sure that Eames doesn't wake up? <laughs> I will go pick up the other one and be right back. <laughs> so it's worked out very, very well. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Cause that's a, that's a lot of running when you've got to drop off at separate schools and then one has to be picked up and then you've got a little bit of time, but then the other one's got to be picked up. It's and, and nap times in there. I assume your little guy is still napping. I mean, he range naps, but yeah, <laughs> he's a, uh, he's, um, he is so strong. <laughs> he's, he's a constant battle. And it's uh it's 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 interesting. <laughs> we try to get him to nap, but then he just screams at us. Mm, children. That's hard. <laughs> it's I mean now we kind of just laugh about it because right. What are, you, what are you gonna do? He's safe in his bed. There's nothing else that's right. gonna happen. But at the same time, you're like, dude, you sound tired. I want a nap, don't you? Like, let's nap together, except you in your room and me on this couch. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, if only they could appreciate napping at that age. <laughs> I'd kill for a nap. But you know what happens? I would nap, except I would rather be crocheting. <laughs> And this is the problem. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yep. Yes. So uh, you you never sold finished objects that your your finished oh, products. I did. I did that for a little bit for a good like maybe two seasons. Wow. I made a whole bunch of hats and a whole bunch of cowls, and I got into a market that's like right up the street from my house. And I sold, um, I sold beanies and it was great. I had such a great time. I really loved it. Um, I loved selling. I didn't necessarily like making the same thing over time, but I'm, again, I'm just, I'm far too logical. So I found the best pattern that would give me the highest ROI um and make sure that my supplies were low and my time was low so I can make a beanie in 35 minutes, super bulky yarn, really pretty, done, tag, out of there. And then, word. Um, and the same thing with the cows. I think the cows took me like an hour and I sold so many. And then I got tired of doing the same thing over and over again. And so I had to, I had to stop. I've had people ask me for commissions, mostly family members. And then I remind them that A, I don't have time. <laughs> And B, it won't, you're not going to like that I'm going to charge you $500 for a shawl because that's how much it costs. And that's what my time is worth. So please remember, like, I, I'm not, there's no discount here. Like, <laughs> like, and nobody wants to really pay for that. And so I'm, I mean, I'm okay with it. I just give them out if, if I want. <laughs> yeah. Shawls are gorgeous. But they are a big time commitment. Yeah, they really are. And I love making them. I mean, I think I was like, I typically am in my office. This is my husband's office, which is why it's space themed. Um, I typically have like a shawl wall behind me. 
and I was picking some off. Um, and I was like, oh, so that's all you do with Jumik, show us. I was like, okay, that's that's fine. I'm just gonna lean. I'm gonna lean so hard into it because there's not enough of them. <laughs> there's not enough shawls, and I want shawls in every single shape, in every single yarn weight, for every single type of maker and every single color. So I've got a lot of work to do. Absolutely. Do you wear the shawls you make? Because I know some people who make shawl after shawl after shawl and then never wear them. I okay. I wear. Which one? I was just wearing one. I wear my intentions wrap, which I love. I wear Fena. I wear my despite shawl, which I tested and did not design, but it is gorgeous. And um, what did I just wear? Oh, I wore I wore Griselda that just came out. I wore her on Mother's Day, but she's she's gone to the yarn store now, so I have to wait to get her back again. <laughs> So I will wear them sometimes. I just typically have a child. And I got to tell you, um, if they mess with my merino wool, we're going to have words. So I try to keep it for special, special occasions. But I do like to wear them. I do prefer wearing cowls because I don't have to fuss with them. So I should probably make more of those so that I will, I will wear them more. I just think shawls are so pretty. You could just tack them up on the wall and they're just like, art is gorgeous. The light hits the room, it's beautiful. I have seriously considered like finding like a long, like really beautiful like branch or like piece of driftwood. I, I don't know where I'm finding this driftwood, but I have this like <laughs> image of like this, you know, that really smooth mm -hmm. piece of driftwood really long and just like hanging it and then just like draping a shawl over and literally having it on the wall like artwork yeah i mean i'm into it i think yeah that's gorgeous that's much better than how i have them um just tacked up with um push pins and then i <laughs> and then i hang them from the points so that they don't um stretch out too much i hang it from like the center point for the for the triangle shawls perfect mm -hmm. ready to go it's like it's like they're up there blocking the whole time <laughs> I love it. I love it. It is hard to wear your makes when kids are little. I was just recently thinking like, gosh, I used to like put on nice earrings and like <laughs> I always wore rings yeah. when I was younger and, and then I had kids and then you're like, your hands are constantly washing and dishes Ugh. and wiping tushies and and like you just let go of all of that stuff because you don't want it like yanked out of your ear or spit up on or like you just can't with all the hand washing and stuff but yeah so it gets easier as they get older and they stop needing you to do all that stuff and they yeah. can look and say oh that's pretty yes. and you can say ow you're pulling on it and they stop <laughs> My girls are like, mommy, your ring is so pretty. Your earrings are so nice. Mommy, can I wear earrings today? And I'm like, sure, baby, go get you some earrings. Mommy, we'll put those on for you. And then my son is like, what's this? What you got? Can I have this? I'm going to rip it right off your neck. Did you know that I can pull you by this? Did you want to go with me? You're going with me now. And so it's, I don't know if it's because he's a boy or if it's because he's one and a half or it's a combination of the two. It's probably just a two. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My, it, my youngest, my oldest is 10. I feel like by then, like you kind of get it, but my youngest is seven. So like your oldest and I, uh, he will st just the other day, he was admiring an earring, but also like moving <laughs> it closer to him. And I was like, honey, honey, like that's, that's attached to me and it's starting to hurt. <laughs> and he like, oh, but yeah, it's just like a, I don't know, it's a lack of awareness mm -hmm, that like mm -hmm. that is that is attached to my body. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, he'll probably get it. He'll probably get it by then because my son is already like wearing headbands because his sisters wear headbands. And so once he sees him start to start put earrings in, he's gonna be like, Mommy, can I this? And I'm just gonna put a sticker on his ear and be like, you have earrings now. You're very welcome. And we're just gonna we're just gonna lean lean all the way in because he's the youngest of of girls. And so 
he gets all the fun stuff. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So when did you learn to knit? Oh, I think I learned to knit sometime last year, late last year. And I decided I would chronicle it on Instagram um, of my failures, my wins and my fails. And there were a lot of fails, uh, but it's been, it's been fun. It's because I can also Tunisian crochet. I understand what I need to do. And because I've been working with yarn for so long and understand stitches in the way, you know, stitches like line up and the anatomy of a stitch, it made it a bit easier for me to kind of just catch on and get going. Now, what I heard from other knitters is like, oh, I can't crochet because there's just too many different places that the hook can go. And I just don't understand where it's going to go. And I'm like, okay. Um, <laughs> there's not that many places, friend. <laughs> like, it's not that difficult. But then when I was learning how to knit, I couldn't figure out where things should go. And I, in, I immediately started doing everything twisted because of the way that we hold the yarn um, when we're crocheting. And so my brain just was like, well, of course you would go back and behind because that's where everything goes. Everything goes back and behind. It makes more sense. Um, so that I had to like change my brain on that. But then I realized that what's really funny is that knowing how to crochet helped my, no, learning, no, learning how to Tunisian crochet helped me learn to knit, which actually made me a better crocheter because now I hold the yarn in my like yarn carrying hand much better. I used, I used to crochet chaotically and it was, it was, it was a two handed cooperation. <laughs> you really had to just, it was so fast. There's like a video of me on <laughs> like crocheting on my uh, Instagram. And I remember looking at it and playing it back and I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's chaos. Other people hold it daintily in their little hand in this lovely little L shape and I'm pinching it and I'm just moving on like a crazy person. Um, so when I started to knit, you just can't do that. It has to be still and calm and tranquil. So I see why they say it's a slow meditative process while well, I was like speed crocheting this whole time. And so I started to hold my yarn that way when I was crocheting and I got much more even stitches. I was a bit slower, which kind of like irks me, but it's fine. And then when I was Tunisian crocheting, I was holding it the same exact way. And I was like, oh, okay. So this is what it's like. This is, this is growth. Fantastic. <laughs> I learned something that's, it's so rare now. <laughs> let's go, let's do it. I love it. Yeah. I could definitely see that because you're right. When you're crocheting, it's you can just kind of let stuff go and like, and pick it up. And like, you can kind of hold your work with your hook sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but when you're knitting, all, all hands on deck, everything yeah. is involved. <laughs> you have more going on than two hands should be able to do. And, and yeah, it's, it is a bit more of a slow thing. I, I will say I do love a good, um, knitting in the round of oh. like a, a body of a sweater all day every day I don't even have to look at it at this point like I you can just like go and watch a show and just mm -hmm. it's, I listen to a lot of television because I'm always looking at my work because I'm I think someone posted the other day a video of them like watching tv and like crocheting and I was like whoa Okay, um, like, I don't do that. <laughs> I can do just a teeny tiny bit for a little bit. And I was getting good enough at um, just doing stockinette in the round that I could like do a couple stitches without looking. I was looking away, I was trying, you know, giving it a go. But now when I'm looking for patterns, knit patterns, I'm like, so you're top down in the round, right? Cause I, that's all I do. Like this is, I, ha I have no time for this. I'm gonna purl all the way back madness. <laughs> But I don't, right? I don't, I don't mind purling. I really don't. I'm working on something right now that's like a three by three rib and it's fine. I can do it. My, my pointer finger is very, it's, it's moving a lot. It moves it down for me. It's, it's getting it done. But what I have found the most um, disturbing to my crew of friends here is when I'm crocheting, not crocheting, knitting, they can hear it because I use metal 
<laughs> needles and they're just like what is what is this noise like what are you doing like so when did you start to make noise with your yarn and they're very put off by it <laughs> i i started with and have always loved bamboo needles because i like the feel of the wood in my hand and because it's quiet mm -hmm. but i have started to appreciate the speed like i really like to knit more garments and so i appreciate the speed of a metal hook and so i just for my birthday got a set of interchangeable metal hooks and like it's taking all my self-control to like not cast on a new sweater <laughs> oh good luck I, I don't i don't know how to do it like I think I have at least two things that are sitting in bags and that need attention, but it's all about the metal. Like I, I started with wood as well. And I was like, it's so sticky and I can't, and it's mm -hmm. tight. And that was the other thing I started like knitting in very, 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 very tightly. And then someone was like, oh, well there's like this grip and slip and all this stuff. And it's like, I have metal, plastic and wood hooks and none of these words I've ever said. And once I started knitting, I was like, oh, okay. I get it. This hits just a little different. And now mm -hmm. I want to get some metal Tunisian hooks because that might make me a feed demon, <laughs> which I always love. I love the satisfaction of finishing anything. However, I'm constantly using fingering white, which doesn't make any sense. I mean, it's, it's easier, it's faster to crochet in fingering. Yes. Depending on your stitches than to knit in fingering. Yes, but still, it's still like, oh, I'm still here. Okay. <laughs> I want to just be done and, and be happy about it. And instead I'm still in it, but it's okay. It's it, the drape, it's always the drape is I was gonna say. It's worth it. Oh, it's God. worth the end result every time. Every single time. I'm never like, oh, I spent too much time on that gorgeous drapey thing that I just made. And I'm so proud. Like, no, I'm yeah. always very happy about it. Yes. Uh, yep. Yeah. About three fourths of the way through, it's like, oh, will I ever be done? And then when you're done, you're like, it's like having a kid a little bit, right? The end, you're like, oh, I'm never having a kid again. I have to do what at the end? And oh, then you yeah. get that beautiful baby and you're like, oh, it was all worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make many of these. <laughs> I'm far more willing to make more fingering weight yarn objects than I am children. Cheers to that. <laughs> <laughs> done and done. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, yep, us too. Benton's teacher just had a baby, and so he's gotten real curious about babies. And so he's like, Mom, are, are you and Dad going to have more babies? And I'm like, nobody. And I'm like, you're seven. Like, if we had a baby now, you would be so mad. <laughs> oh, everything stops. It's real. It's really harder on those older kids, man. It's It's a rough one. My oldest, she's a good sport, but she also is obsessed with her brother. Thank God. Otherwise, it would be it would be really difficult to, for that. Like, man, a seven year gap that's rough. That's almost a generation. A five year gap you can kind of get get into, but whoo, sounds a lot. And I see yeah. it because my my husband and his youngest sister is. I think that's like maybe nine or 10 year difference. So I know it, it can, it makes a difference. I don't think they really got close until um, they got both were adults. Mm -hmm. They didn't yep. really grow up together. That's my brother and my sister. We're all four years apart. So my brother is four years older and my sister is four years younger. So there's eight years between them. And so like a lot of her formative childhood, mm -hmm. he was away at college. Yeah. He came back for her graduation and he's like, who are these people? And I'm like, her best friend. loser. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's 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 a, a more challenging to have closeness because because it just is. You're so capable by the time you're you know eight, and then to have this little baby who can't even like move, you know that's a that's a lot to keep up with. Yeah, and it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of response it, it can be a lot of responsibility on that young kid too which 
mm-hmm. which isn't the best, but you know, we all come out stronger for it. It's fine. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yes. I, yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree. So much character building for my little sister. <laughs> She's all right. I'm sure she's a bitch. She's, she's fine. She is so strong, and I feel real responsible for that. <laughs> well, look, I'm I'm the middle of five, so yeah, and we run the full gamut of so many ages. Like my eldest sister is nine years older than me, and my youngest is sixteen years younger than me. Yeah, so. It's a, it's a lot. <laughs> you just become, at a certain point, you just become disconnected and you're like, see you when you're an adult. <laughs> like, let me know when I can buy you a drink and then we'll do that and we'll talk about the childhood trauma. <laughs> it's, it's too early to get into right now. <laughs> we'll deal with it later. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love it. Okay. I, I think I could talk to you all night, but I'm going to keep us moving here. <laughs> Tell us about your name. I'm yes. super, I love to hear how people come up with these things and, and the meaning behind them. And it's, it's always fun. So tell us about your name. Man, let me tell you, the naming thing is, it was stressful because I, I had a completely different Instagram name that was just based on a moniker that I'd used forever. And my account was my personal account. Like, and I was like, I'm, I'm going in, I'm doing this crochet thing. And I stressed over what name to do it for a while. And, you know, you know, Pam, right? And so we were, I was thinking of the things that Pam said, which was like, you know, name it after yourself. Your name is unique to you. It is, your name is your brand already. And I'm like, yeah, but like, there's like 50 million Brits in the world and I don't want to get lost in that. So I was just thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and just put it in the back of my mind. The way that my brain works is I can like, (laughs) this is a very, very nerdy thing, but I basically will put it to task and let like the background processes work and work on it. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) Kind of like, (laughs) kind of like a computer. And Mm -hmm. at certain point I'm in the kitchen and I'm cooking up something and I text my girlfriends and I go, what about the name Not Bad Brit? And they're like, oh, okay. That's kind of cute. That's kind of fast. I like it. I was like, yeah, three syllables, real easy, real short, real cute, real tight. Um, I didn't want it to be crochet because Mm -hmm. that's limiting. At the time, I was looking at macrame cord like, you are so pretty. Uh, <laughs> and I had macrame nothing. <laughs> so I was trying to keep all my options open. And I wasn't thinking about designing. I was just thinking about selling hats and cowls. And I like it. And it's punchy. It, and it's um, it felt really good for me. Pimped. people. And anytime that I asked someone about it, they were like, yeah that feels really good for you. Mm-hmm. I'm a very short person, um, which always shocks people because I'm like big. <laughs> this, another, like, like, I tell people, people assume that I am tall as well and I'm only 5'3". <laughs> and I say, I have a big person personality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I've got tall, broad energy. So yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm five one. I'm about five five with my hair. Um, so people just assume I'm very. Can I get the hair going? I I always am on my tiptoes, and all of my shoes have heels. So I was like, you know, that's like a big. It, it has like a punch to it, and so that's me right there in your face. So it, it stuck, and I I wouldn't change it. I really really like it. I don't feel like I've nailed down um, a logo. <laughs> Thanks to Canva, I just put something in that like was cute enough, um, but I don't really use it. And eventually I'll probably get something that feels a little bit more towards like my mission and the things that I want to do. Like for whatever reason, the Makers of Color Collective has a beautifully crafted logo that I made in a color scheme and not bad Brits like, hi, can you, can you help me? And like, <laughs> can you make me a logo? <laughs> well, well, we'll get to that eventually. It's, it's too much too soon. <laughs> you got, 
when you got little tiny people, you just got to give yourself some grace and take it a little bit at a time. I saw um, a saying once that said, um, your dreams are waiting for you, not running from you. Sure. And I was like, yes, like we do not need to chase these things. Like take, take your time, take, keep your priorities straight Yeah. and, and just like slowly move towards it. It sounds like you had a lot of passion for the collective and, and that fueled, I'm going to say some creativity just and, <laughs> and, and you'll get there. You'll get there with not bad bread too. Yeah. It'll, it'll get there. And you know what, what I realize is everything doesn't have to be perfect the first go round. And I've been able to be successful without having something like brilliantly crafted that feels like it's on theme and on par with my greatness. Instead, I've got this great name and this killer personality and this voice that won't stop talking. So I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> And it's, 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 it's working. It's working. And I'm, and I'm, and I like it. Eventually I'll, I'll nail something down, but it's all right. It's, it, it's more than all right. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to say it's more than all right. I love it. So tell us, what have you been working on here lately? Woo. Okay. So, um, I am hosting my very second, um, crochet along more like a make along for the astrologer shawl which i did with ken yarn of well jake of ken yarns and it's based on your astrological signs and you go through like your rising sign and your moon and your sun and there's all these colors that you can choose from to make this this great shawl and um there's a knit version and a tunisian crochet version because i love recreating things that are knit in in crochet whether it's tunisian or not and when he said he wanted to um re-release his pattern i was like you're gonna do a crochet version and he's like let's talk i was like let's talk um so we we talked we designed we made it and um i wish i had it here to show but i don't he has it and and he lives in like rhode island so i can't just go get it um but yeah that's happening at the end of the month it's for knitters, it's for new crocheters, old crocheters, Tunisian crocheters, anybody. Um, and it's it's gonna be fun. I have never done anything like this before, but I just like really want to create community outside of Instagram because Instagram is not being very friendly for us right now. And I still, I, I just, I miss the chatter back and forth. And so posting it on Discord, um, there's already a couple people there chatting it up, picking colors and whatnot, and that's super fun. I'm also getting ready to celebrate um, the anniversary of the KBB shawl, which I love. I think I have it here. It's it's like my, this is like my stunner. This is the one that I felt like, oh my God, I really like did a thing. It's this like crazy kite shaped shawl that I designed last year. I released it on my birthday. It went gangbusters. People really loved it. It is something that continues to make me very, very proud. And so right now I'm just chronicling the, um, you know, the birth of the KBB shawl and inviting other people to either make one or show theirs on my birthday, which is next week, next Wednesday. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. <laughs> May's my month. I'm very much a Taurus. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> See, I love. I am a. I'm a double Taurus. It is aggressive. <laughs> I love it quite a bit. I. I am the definitely the embodiment. But um, what I'm trying to do for the KBB shawl is release a KBB cowl. So that's what I have. Like in front of me right now that I'm, I'm actively working on. So it's, oh, there's camera. So it still has a seam down the middle and I'm just, it's a little baby shawl right now, but it's gonna end up being a kerchief cowl. <gasps> yeah, so it's like easy to wear. Uh -huh. the stripings of KDB like um, influenced and then it'll have some top ribbing. So I'm really hoping to have that done in time to release it for for free on my website, which I have not done in forever. Um, my website does not get enough love, but 
you know, we got these kids, they gotta live. But that's what I've got going on. I've got some, some secret stuff that's always happening, that's always keeping me quiet <laughs> on the internet. Um, yeah, I am just, gosh, I am, I am booked and busy, which is like my whole motto of the entire year is I'm just booked and busy. And I feel very blessed to be able to say that and do these things that I really enjoy while raising my family and, um, you know, trying to enjoy life as much as possible. So I don't know. I don't know what's in store soon, but things are, things are coming quite along. That's so wonderful. How exciting. Okay. You sent me, so in the description below, I have a link to a blog post all about you that people should go look at. And I believe you sent me the astrologic shawl. Yes. Yes for that. And I think I'm pretty sure it's the Tunisian mm -hmm. one is the picture you sent me. So everybody should go there and check that out and take a look at it. It is beautiful. If you have the knit version, send me that picture too. And I'll add that so people can see that too. And then send me links to the cow stuff yeah. and we'll add that, that too. That link has, um, uh, the link that I sent you has a link to the cow in it as well. So you can easily add both to cart and be on your way. Um, which is great. And if you're a person who's like, look, I'm not really into cows. I don't really do this, but I want to support whatever it is that you're doing. Like I also have an ability for you to like donate either a pattern or a cow entry. Um, because there are people out there that want to do stuff, um, that just can't like things are hard. So I also have a list of people who are like, Hey, I would love it if I could get, um, you know, a yarn kit or, a pattern or, you know, an entry or whatever. And so I think we've given out four kits already. And if we still have people that are looking for yarn kits, like I will go in my own personal stash and I will like give it to people because, you know, this, I'm not here trying to do all this so that I can like, you know, live in a finer house, you know? <laughs> I really just like to find other people that want to do the things that I want to do. And that's, really it and i want to be able to empower and um inspire those that look like me to know that they can also do these things because honestly i never thought that i'd be sitting here you know with a crochet hook in my hand at all times <laughs> like if you would have asked 12 year old brit she would have said um so she's gonna make partner by 30 and she's gonna be a kick-ass attorney and uh yeah that's her whole life and that did not so, <laughs> and I love my life the way that it is. So I feel like, you know, just giving the people what they need, what they want. I love it. I love it. Ah, oh, so wonderful. Okay. I'm going to ask you about some of your favorites. Mm. You ready? I've got okay. some opinions. Yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite thing to design? Shawls. Always. <laughs> I might have guessed. That. Yeah. <laughs> Where is your favorite place to work? Um, in my basement on the couch with the TV on and probably a beer in my hand. I love it. <laughs> um, what is your favorite yarn to work with? Ooh, weight mm -hmm. or blend? Give me weight. Give me okay. weight first, and then fiber content. It's it's gonna be fingering weight. I'll complain about it, but I love it. <laughs> And then fiber content, um, Superwash Merino. I, it's just, it's, a, it's my old friend. I'm trying to branch out. Um, I've been working with a little bit of alpaca um, mm -hmm. and that's that's been very lovely. And I'm gonna be doing a design with some mohair and I'm, I'm intrigued <laughs> how it's gonna go. Got my fingers crossed that it works out. If, if, if you get stuck, like literally stuck. I did a test with mohair. Stick it in the freezer. I've heard that. I, That's I what everybody said. Stick it in the freezer. Day with mohair, or maybe it was Surrey. I they had the same thing to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and everyone was like, "Put it in the freezer before you frog it." And I was like, "Frog? No, <laughs> I want to do that." I don't want a frog. <laughs> yes, yes. The freezer and a very t like teeny pair of scissors the few times I had to frog it was like you sometimes you just got to get in there and like snip a couple of those Oof. fuzzies mm. 
All right. What is your favorite uh, hook? Size, brand? Uh... My favorite hook is a four millimeter tulip etimo hook. Gray, beautiful, all day. It's gold on the tip. It is gorgeous. I've, that is my tried and true. I've been using it forever and it's wonderful. I have this prim in my hand and mm. this is my slow down hook. Um, and it's a size four. <laughs> I love it. You're consistent. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, I think you already answered this, but just in case, what's your favorite thing to drink while you work? Um, I do enjoy a beer as I'm working, um, but I will also take a Negroni, a Martini, or Manhattan, <laughs> preferably made by my husband because um, he's the best bartender in the house. I love it. I love <laughs> it. What is your favorite color? Ooh. That's really difficult. So my actual favorite color is orange, which I don't wear. I don't know why. Um, but uh, mustard yellow, olive green, all day. Love it. And gray. Gray, I probably, gray, gray might be my favorite color, but it's kind of devoid of color. So I try not to say that too much. <laughs> it's your favorite neutral to go with all yes. the other colors. Yes, neutral, perfect. What is your favorite season? Ooh, I love summer. Like, give me sunshine all day. I want to wear as few clothes as possible as, for as long as possible, from sun up to sundown. Um, and I live in Seattle. <laughs> it's not the best place for that. It's not. But summer in Seattle is something special. So you know what we do? We go to Bakersfield instead. <laughs> backwards but that's where family is so it's fine and it's very very hot there and there's a pool there are not very many pools up here um and that's changing but yeah summer all day everywhere summer i love humidity that's how much i love summer that's that's saying something <laughs> i know <laughs> i love it i love it what is your favorite item to make i love to make garments however they take a really long time but i'm the most proudest of a garment that i have made because i can wear it um, i've stopped making things that i won't wear and that won't fit in with my wardrobe having three kids body changes they suck your soul and you have to you're no longer those numbers so sometimes you have to take um take it into your own hands and so that's that's where i am with life um and i like it I, i'm and knitting specifically garments has been something that's been making me very very happy i love it that's wonderful that's wonderful are you a book or a podcast person or podcast neither? total podcast what's a podcast you've been loving lately <clears throat> Swindled. I like Swindled. Ooh, what's that about? Swindled is about basically the worst people in the world. Um, like con <laughs> artists? Like con artists or, you know, yeah, mostly con artists, embezzlers, mm -hmm. um, people that you know, people that you don't know. Um, and just the way that he puts together the podcast is really unique. Um, the sound that he uses and just the, his voice and the way that he does his background. It's, it is a different, it's like a different way of kind of compiling the entire story. There's always a really great intro that you think is a story and it's like, but that's not what the story is about. And then you kind of keep going, which, which I totally love. And I'm a person who has always wanted to be on the radio. So I am podcast all the time. All the time. I love it. I love it. Um, are you a sweater or a cardigan person? Oh, sweater. I don't know how cardigans work. <laughs> you got like close it. There's the thing. Especially when you have kids, like it's you just want to throw it on and it just stays where it's supposed to. <laughs> yes. No, no fuss. No fuss. Exactly. Exactly. If you're gonna grab a snack, are you a salty or sweet person? I'm a salty person, unless it's dark chocolate, then I'm doing both. <laughs> yes, yes. Which is worse, swatching or weaving in your ends? Swatching is worse. 
um, because I crochet over my ends like an adult. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll knot it just right. Uh, I'll do that like invisible join thing that I learned from Chiwe. And I just, I just keep on trucking. Uh, but yeah, swatch is horrible. Swatching, swatching for me is so bad that in my own designs, I'll be like, okay, work up to row 15 and that should be four inches. Like, <laughs> just like, let us be the same. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. Okay. That's, that's all my questions. It has been so much fun chatting with you. Yes. It's so good. <laughs> all right. Britt told me she has a special gift for everybody who's watching this. And she, I just, I'm blown away. That's so generous of you. Why don't you tell <laughs> us about that? Yeah. So um, I'm super happy that I got to do this. And I wanted to make sure that, um, you know, that I gave your audience something nice for indulging me and listening to me ramble on. Um, so for anyone who is watching now until Sunday at like 11 59 PM Pacific standard time. So that's the times that I'm in. You can use the code S E K 50 to get 50% off of anything that you buy on my website. That's things that are in the D stash. That's, um, you know, the, the make along that's patterns, whatever, have at it, have fun, discover something new for me. Let me know what you like. I, would really love it if you, you know, found something that she wanted to make, grab the KBB because she's having her birthday and she likes to celebrate. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of really good stuff on there. Um, and if you want to finish make, there's some up there too. And there's some, um, there's some yarn up there. I might, I might even throw up some more D-stash yarn this weekend. If, if I can find some time, do not hold me to that. But it's only going to be from right now to um, the end of the day on Sunday. So don't dawdle. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nope, nope. Such a good deal. That is so generous of you. Thank you so much, Britt. It has been uh, just wonderful talking to you. We will definitely have to get together and chat again soon. Yes, absolutely. Please do. This so been... thank you so much. You have a great night. Okay. You too. Good night, everybody. Sleep. Oh my goodness. I could, I could have talked for hours. That was so much fun. So much in common and what a, a wonderful maker. Britt has really, really gorgeous patterns. Um, links in the description below to her website. So get on the move fast. If you're listening to this before Sunday uh, at 1159 uh, Pacific time and, and use that code to, uh, buy some amazing stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. I would love it if you would subscribe and turn on notifications, like this video so more people can see it, and come back for more Meet the Maker interviews and all sorts of great stuff. Thanks so much for watching and happy crafting. <laughs>